Good afternoon. Captain Justin DeLeon here from the University of Iowa, APMS here at Iowa, and also the MS3 instructor. Today I'm going to talk about something a little more unique uh, than some of my previous videos. Today we're going to talk about radio operations. So the purpose of today's lesson is to talk about radio operations at the platoon level and focus on how we can be uh, concise, we can have, we have clarity and talk very efficiently on the radio, which is going to help ultimately lead to mission success. Uh, this is going to help cadets a lot at advanced camp, but this is also going to help any soldier out there that hasn't really um, received proper instruction on how to use a radio. The main reference that we're going to be using today is ATP 6-2.53 uh, techniques for tactical radio operations. All right, so I'm going to start by giving a good frame of reference a little bit. So we're going to talk about electromagnetic spectrum and just kind of what it is and where the radio operations work on that. And then also talk about um, some of the different modes that we talk about, talk on on, on FM comms. We're going to go over call signs, numbers. We're going to go over pro words and then kind of talk over what a normal radio check should look like. Kind of get the basics down. Uh, but I guarantee a lot of words that you think you're using on the radio are actually not supposed to be used, or you're probably using them incorrectly. So hopefully this can clear some of that up. Okay, first of all, we're gonna talk about the electromagnetic spectrum. This is a spectrum in which data is transmitted by waves. So we're talking about sound waves, light waves, anything that is moving in a wave is somewhere on the electromagnetic spectrum. Visible light is there, microwaves are there, x-rays are there, sound waves are there. Everything that is transmitted is typically on this spectrum. Okay, so where the military typically functions and works, when we talk about FM communications, again, FM or AM is just like it is on your radio uh, at home that you li listen to in the car. That is what we primarily use in the Army as well. That is our primary. There's lots of special radios out there that we use. I'm not going to be talking about those today, but mostly we use FM comms. So if you use a PRC-119, that's going to be on this. Okay, so it's in that FM spectrum, FM comms. And really what that is part of is the VHF very high frequency, they're very creative about these names, all right, on that spectrum, okay? Um, to the right of us, to the right, you got UHF, SHF, all right, EHF, all these different areas where basically the frequencies become higher and higher and higher, and the wavelengths become shorter and shorter and shorter, all right, where you can transmit more data over these frequencies over there. Okay, this is where we primarily work though. The Army also does use HF radios, so high frequency. So you would think high frequency makes it sound like, hey, that's a very high frequency, but really it's lower on the spectrum that we use. Okay, so one thing to, make, one thing to understand about communications is that the primary radio that we use, FM comms, is a line of sight radio, where that means that my antenna that is transmitting <laughs> typically has to be able to visually see your antenna for that message to get across. Okay, yes, it can go over some terrain, it happens, but what it means is that my wavelength has to directly hit your antenna for us to speak, for you to hear me, okay? So sometimes that's why we struggle with FM comms, especially in mountainous terrain, heavily vegetated terrain, the wavelengths just don't get to your antenna. So that's something to consider, okay? HF is a little bit different. HF does not require line of sight, and it's actually a very elongated wavelength. So what happens is you can use the atmosphere and the earth to bounce wavelengths off each other, and you can actually talk incredible distances. Like legitimately, you can use, you can talk to someone across the globe on an HF radio if it's working properly and the person on the receiving side is working it properly. It is more complex and it is more difficult to use. It requires um, more uh, technical expertise, but it can be very effective. All right, so that is an option that we use, but this is what we primarily use. Uh, it's much more reliable, but the range is much shorter. All right. Okay, so we're going to talk about FM comms. Um, and really, this is, again, primarily what we use. And we're going to talk about three different ways that we use it, three things that you're going to see in your career. What you're going to see as a cadet at advance camp, or oftentimes if you're on an Army post doing gunnery or training in the field, Oftentimes, we will use what's called single channel plain text. All right, so I'm just going to, you'll often see it as SCPT. Let me write that a little bigger for you so you can see it. All right, so single channel plain text is just regular radio waves. 
This is legitimately just the radio that you listen to in your car. All right, it's not encrypted in any way. It's not safeguarded in any way. It's just out there for anyone to listen to. Okay, so obviously it's not safe and secure to use, but sometimes we just use it, okay? So single channel plain text, that is a radio working by itself, all right? We also have single channel cipher text, all right? This is another method that you might use a lot that you'll see. Single channel cipher text is encrypted radio communication. So we use this thing called an SKL. It has, it's a, it has a fill, which basically has an encryption on it. And in order for your radio to talk to other radios in your network, you have to have taken that SKL, that um, machine, and filled your radio with the key. And once your radio has the encryption key, it can now talk within the network. If it loses that fill, if it drops the key, it can now no longer talk. So it's encrypted. Um, when I was in Afghanistan, again, this is probably a while ago, seven or eight years ago, uh, this is what we typically use, single channel ciphertext. We felt confident that um, the Taliban was not able to listen in with that encryption, okay? However, the way we train are moving towards training now is we're training to fight against, you know, more um, real armies, more like, you know, the Russian army, Chinese army, Iranian army, anything that we might come up against, but a, a real first or second world nation that has a legitimate military with real capabilities of breaking encryption. So another one that we use, and this is what you might find more days on post, especially in training environment, I'm gonna call it FH, but it's frequency hop. Okay, frequency hop, again, is encrypted, but also it has a schedule of keys, a schedule of frequencies in it. So when I load my radio with the encryption key, I'm also loading it with a schedule of frequencies. So basically my radio is jumping frequencies as it's transmitting. And only another radio that has one, the key, but two, also the frequency schedule is gonna be able to listen in because you have to be on the perfect schedule. And in order to be on that schedule, you also have to put in you know, this is getting a little technical, but you also have to put in the perfect exact same time of day into each radio. That way they are on the same schedule and they started at the same point. Um, so it's very diff much more difficult to break, much more difficult to hack. Um, and really, like I'm talking when it's jumping frequencies, we're talking hundreds of frequencies per second. So literally to listen in on this, you would one have to have the key and you have to perfectly change your frequencies a hundred times a second to listen in. It's just not possible. So it's much more safeguarded uh, and it's, it's very difficult to hack. So that is typically what we train with nowadays. Again, at CST or at camp, if you're a cadet or if you're working on a range or something in the real army, in, the, in active duty, you're most likely working on single channel plain text. If you're training in the field in active duty and you're training for real missions, you're probably using free cop. Okay, so move past kind of the science of it. I wanna talk now about you know, functionality of a radio. So let's talk about some call signs. So this is gonna be very, very basic, okay? But typically, we talk about call signs. I want you guys to be able to recognize what these are, okay? So if we're working in an infantry unit, all right, just so there's no confusion, typically, all right, a six is the officer, the OIC, the guy in charge, okay? It could sometimes be a squad leader. I've seen it happen, but Typically, that's like a, a lieutenant, a captain, you know, a battalion commander. It's the commander of a unit. It's the person in charge of that element. So a PL is typically a six, okay? A seven element is typically going to be that NCO in charge of that element. So platoon sergeant, first sergeant, and so forth, all right? Often, you will also see a nine. A nine is also typically an NCO in charge. And you kind of see this more at the brigade or potentially division level as you go up in rank. Uh, because there's more, more call signs in there. But that's typically, I see that as a command sergeant major of an element, all right? If you see threes, that's typically an S3 of a battalion, so your operations officer who's a major or a brigade. Right, and then you see a five. A five is almost always the XO, all right? Executive officer of whatever unit you're in. <clears throat> so those are what you'll see. One little thing to note, is if you're in the armor world, be prepared sometimes for a one here and a four here. So sometimes the officer in charge is a one. So it's, you know, hawk one. And then the platoon sergeant is sometimes hawk four. And it could add some confusion. So just note that if you're ever talking to an armor unit, 
and you ask, hey, get your six on the net, get your you know, officer in charge on the net, and some guy comes on and says, hey, this is Hawk 1, don't get confused and be like, hey, I don't want to talk to a squad leader, I want to talk to six. For them, their leader may be a one. Just something to keep in mind uh, to avoid any confusion. All right, the other call signs I want to mention just so there's, you're tracking is uh, call signs for command nodes. So a TOC, a Tactical Operations Center, is usually called main. That's his call sign, all right? So main, and that main is essentially representing the commander in some way, um, but if I'm calling for Hawk main, I'm calling for the Hawk command node, all right? Oftentimes we have, this is a talk usually, oftentimes we have what's called a TAP, which is that forward operating command post. All right, you'll often see that. Typically, you will see TAC as X-ray. All right, so X-ray, that is, a, that is a, a normal one to see. And then sometimes you'll have a mobile command node, a further command node. I've seen it before, either Tango or Oscar. <clears throat> I've seen both these as well. So if you see any of four of these, you're required to report to one of those. It's often a command node for an element, probably a battalion or higher. Uh, but that's just something to think about. You might have a main or an x-ray for a company as well, uh, but that's kind of up to that company commander, how he wants to run his reporting. Uh, just something to be aware of. Okay, I want to mention um, numbers, okay? There's a lot of talk uh, that I've seen recently regarding numbers. Um, according to the doctrine that I'm using, numbers are still red um, as they previously have been. So we got one, two, okay? We have the number three, which technically on the radio, according to ATP 6-2.53, is still supposed to be pronounced tree, like a spruce tree, all right? You got four, which is supposed to be pronounced fower, fower, all right? You got five, which is pronounced fife, F-I-F-E, fife. F -I -F -E, fife. All right, you got six, seven, eight, and then you got nine, which is pronounced niner. All right, obviously this is meant to make sure there's no, um, you know, no question on what you're saying. One thing I highly recommend is whenever you're reading off numbers on the radio, whatever you're doing, all right, say single digit numbers. If you're reading a grid, let's say the grid is two, three, four, five, if I were a fife, don't say 23, 45. All right, that's confusing. It gets people off. You have more of a chance of people not receiving that transmission or understanding it. So say it, two, three, four, five. All right, make sure people acknowledge that and read it back to you um, with, by number as well. Okay, we're gonna talk about some pro words. This is where people struggle the most. This is where people struggle because they don't know the correct words to say. All right. Understand these words, use them. It's gonna show that you are competent. It's gonna show that you know how to use the radio. And if you use it correctly, it's gonna make you efficient on the radio, succinct, and it's gonna make sure your intent is understood by your subordinates or by your hire, all right? Learn these words and use them correctly, all right? Most of you probably know, but there's probably some up here that you think you're using correctly that you might not be, okay? So first, we're gonna talk about a positive affirmation of an order, of a receipt of an order, okay? So some of those are acknowledge. All these words that I'm going to go over today can be found in Appendix I from ATP 6-2.53, okay? Acknowledge, it means I acknowledge your transmission. I understand, right? Roger. Roger, transmission received. All right, that's what you're saying, okay? Will come, stands for will comply. So if a superior gave me an order on the radio and I told him will go, it means I understand the order and I will comply, all right? So those are our three positives, all right? That, hey, I got receipt. Notice one I'm not using, I'm not saying good copy here, okay? A lot of people, instead of saying Roger acknowledge, say good copy. That is incorrect, all right? And there's, there are several higher ranking officers in the army, especially like battalion commanders on up, who will be, is their pet peeve when you say good copy here. Do not say that here, all right? And I'm gonna teach you, I'm gonna show you later on in this video, when to say good copy and when it's appropriate, okay? So, some negatives. 
if I did not receive, all right, the biggest thing is correction. If I sent you a message and you say back to me, or if I say, hey, it's grid one, two, three, four, and you say, I read back grid one, two, four, five, in order for me to say it again, say again what the grid is and what it should be, I say correction. When I say correction, it tells him that was incorrect. Here is a new version. Prepare to receive again. Okay, so correction is there. Also, a lot of times you will hear negative. This is a word that is in many RTO handbooks, but it is not technically in ATP 6-2.53. Just know that. But if someone says on the radio and they're incorrect or they need a correction or if they're asking you a question, hey, is this the way things are going? Say negative. This is how it's going. All right, you can also use correction still. Okay? Those are really the two that I, that I use the most, that I think works the most uh, efficiently. Okay. Over and out. We're going to talk about both of those. So we got over and we got out. Two very specific words, okay? And most, most people have this down, but we do not say them together. It's too redundant. It's a waste of, it's a waste of space. It's a waste of mouth, all right? Over means my transition, transmission to you is complete. I'm awaiting a response, all right? If I say, hey, blah, 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 over. Now it's time for you to respond to my message, okay? If I say out, blah, 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 out, hey, transmission is done. You will not say anything back to me. I will not say anything else to you. We're done. Conversation's over. So basically, over is like saying, hey, it's a phone conversation where I say, hey, what's going on? How are you doing? All right, clearly I want a response. Out is like saying, hey, go walk the dog at 2 p.m., and hang up the phone, all right? When you say out, you are literally hanging up the phone, all right? So there's no reason to ever say over and out because if you're over, if you say over, you're wanting a response, and then you say out at the same time, you're both hanging up. It's like saying, hey, send me a response, and then I hang up on you. It's like, it's like a jerk, right? Okay, the point is don't say them together. It's not necessary, okay? Technically, <clears throat> the person that begins a conversation is the person that is supposed to out the conversation. So if I initiate a conversation with someone, I am supposed to out them, okay? In reality, that the out is supposed is a right reserved for the higher ranked person, okay? So I don't care, it doesn't matter if you started the conversation, do not out your company commander. Do not out your battalion commander. That is his role to out you, okay? Even if it's the conversation's over and you're like, I don't know what to say, just, Leave it blank for him, all right? Don't out your commander. It will not be good for you, okay? That's a good, good tip there. Okay, moving on. I want to talk about break, okay? Break is a great word that can be used very effectively, but it's something that people often don't understand, okay? The purpose of using break is to allow the net to have freedom for someone to jump in if they have something of higher precedence or higher priority that needs to be set on the net, okay? That's the, that's the reason why. But you can use break as a help to you when talking on the net. You know, if you're getting jumbled or you're not sure what to say next, call break, hang up for a second, get your thoughts together, and call it back in. If you're calling up a medevac, line one, all right, is, you know, this, this, this. Line two, this, this, this. Break. Okay. Line three, this, this, this. Line four, this, this, this. Line five, this, this, this. Break. Okay, take your time, use the brakes efficiently. One of my best commanders that I had, brigade commander at uh, 2nd Brigade 1st Cav, used brakes all the time. And sometimes, you know, he was the commander, but sometimes he would call a break just to think about something. And he'd be on, he, he would break it for 20 seconds and then come back and talk. Hey, don't be afraid to use a break and take some time, gather your thoughts again, and talk clearly on the radio. All right, use break the best way it's supposed to be, you know, the, the way that it helps you the most. Okay, okay. I'm gonna talk about I say again versus I repeat. All right, this is one that I'm sure you guys have been hammered on. But when I want someone to repeat what they just said on the radio, I need to say, I say again. Or, hey, please say again. So if I'm 
repeating myself or if I want someone to repeat it, use the word say again because technically if you use repeat, it's a fires command and it means repeat the target you just shot. So there's always a chance that there was a fires mission going on. You know, someone's firing mortars or artillery onto an area and you say the word repeat, it gets heard and they do that fire mission again when it was not intended to do so. Okay, so be safe, always say say again when you want to say something that you just said, repeat it or you want something repeated back to you. Okay, get in the habit of always using that. All right. Next, I want to talk about disregard. All right, oftentimes we'll be talking on the net and then while we're talking, circumstances change or we'll receive a frago. It happens more than you think. Okay, if you're talking on the net, you put out some information incorrectly or while you're talking on the net, a frago comes down, hey, just say disregard last. All right, if I tell you to disregard my last transmission, it just means my last transmission did not happen. Any grids, anything that you got from it, erase it. Erase it from your memory, erase it from your notes, it doesn't happen, okay? So that's a quick way, again, to say, instead of going to the net and saying, hey, man, you know, I called you five minutes ago and that grid I gave you was wrong, so can you just take that off? Just, just call me and say, hey, you, this is me. Hey, disregard a transmission from five minutes ago, um, no longer necessary. And now it's gone, it's done. And there's no explanation, there's not this long, drawn-out process that happens on the radio. That's why we use these pro words, uh, these pronouns, so we can, um, you know, do this efficiently and succinctly. Okay. A lot of times you're going to get <clears throat> a phrase that says more to follow. Okay. That means expect information to follow as they transmit. Okay. Or a lot of times you're going to just get the words to follow. So if I call you and I say, hey, nine line medevac to follow, over. It's telling you get prepared to copy. Okay. I might say prepare to copy. That's not technically a pro word, but that's something you might hear as well. But to follow over. Hey, you, this is me, salute report to follow, over. And then you tell me, I'm ready to copy, and I send it, okay? So a lot of times you're gonna get this to follow, to follow, to follow. Something is coming to follow, and really it means prepare to copy. It means get some notes out, because there's gonna be a report coming, all right? A couple more that I wanna talk about, and then we'll be moving on. All right, relay. This is a word that is doctrinal, and you will hear it, okay? A lot of times, we need a relay through someone. All right, so what this means, let's, let's give an example. If I'm in a patrol base, and I'm in kind of a, a basin area, and, and I'm down in low ground, because I don't want to be where the enemy might accidentally walk up on me, or in advantageous terrain, all right? I might need a relay to talk to higher. I may not be able to talk to higher where I'm at. So I'm gonna send my OPOP up on top of a hill where they can relay to higher. So I might call my OPOP and say, hey, can you please relay to Hawk, Maine that uh, we're initiating our arrest plan at this time, okay? And he says, Roger, we'll relay. And he relays it, okay? Asking someone to relay is a doctrinal way of saying, hey man, send this for me. I can't get a hold of him myself, okay? Doctrinal. Okay, the last thing I wanna talk about is out copy. and good copy, and how to use these terms correctly. Like I said, a lot of people use good copy as Roger, and that is incorrect. That is not the way it's meant to be used, and it is often a pet peeve. It's definitely a pet peeve of mine, and it's often a pet peeve of higher ranking officers. Do not use it that way. Don't do it, it's not what it's meant for. Use the word Roger, use the word knowledge. There is one instance where you use it, and the instance is when someone says out copy to you, okay? The person that says, actually I should reframe that, the person that says out copy is the same person that will say good copy. So here's how these are used. If I say out copy at the end of a transmission, I want you to read me back what I just said to you, okay? So for instance, if I read you a grid and I say, hey, enemy located at Echo Golf, one, two, three, four, five, six. I didn't read those numbers correctly, but you get the gist, all right? And I say out copy over. So I read you the grid, out copy over. What I'm telling you now is read back that grid to me. So that person in the line says, Roger, I copy grid Echo Golf, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? If he says back that grid correctly to me, I say, that's a good copy. Out. Or if I need to send something else, over. Okay? So I will out copy someone. They will read back it, read it back to me. 
if they had, if they read it correctly, I will tell them good copy. And now they are confirmed that they have the right grid. Okay. If they read me back the wrong grid, let's say this guy goes Echo Golf one two four eight five nine. Or do I say? I say correction. The grid is, and then I say the grid again until, and then I say I'll copy over, and then he says it back until he reads it back correctly, and now I say good copy. So now we both are confirmed that the grid is correct and we both have it. All right? That is the proper way to use out copy and good copy. All right. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about today is I want to talk about you, uh, a radio check. Okay, I'm sure you guys have heard a lot of different radio checks, but what we got to get in the habit of is not getting on the net and being like, hey, Bill, can you hear me, man? Or, hey, Tom, uh, what's up? You know, how do I sound? All right? Let's get in the habit of doing proper radio checks. That's how it's supposed to be done, and there's an art to it. Okay, I shouldn't say there's an art to it. There's a skill to it, just knowing how to do it. Okay, so we're going to go into a basic transmission, right? This is the most basic transmission you can do. We're going to talk about radio checks. There's different ways you might hear it. All right, so I'm going to talk about each one of these. But let's say we have two people. We got Hawk 6 and we got Hawk 7. We got like a platoon leader and his platoon sergeant, and they're going to do a radio check together. Okay? So 6 is going to call 7. So he's going to say, Hawk 7, hey you, this is Hawk 6. Hey you, this is me. All right. Radio check. And then what's he got to say to end the transmission? Over. All right. So now that he said over, Hawk 7 knows that he's requiring a response. He's asking for a response. So he will say back. Hawk 6. This is. Hawk 7. Roger. Over. That is the proper way to do it. A lot of times you hear this Lima Charlie or loud and clear. That is a method. People say it. This is the best way. Roger over. Or if he doesn't, you know, he can talk, he can tell him that he's coming to broken. But if you say Roger, it means I hear him loud and clear. And it saves a lot of time, a lot of words, okay? So then you go, Hawk 7, this is Hawk 6, Roger, and now he wants to end the phone call. It's over. Out. Done. Okay? That is the best radio check that you can do. All right? So Hawk 7, this is Hawk 6, radio check over, 6S7. Six Hawk 6, this is Hawk 7. Roger, over. 7 tells 6. Roger, we're good. And then 6 tells 7 again. Hey, 7, this is 6. Roger, out. Without this transmission, the final one, everyone forgets this, but without the final transmission, 7 is now wondering, oh, man, did he hear me, though? I could hear him, but he can't hear me. Crap. Let me, start, let me call him again. And it wastes time. Make sure you give acknowledgement that you can hear 7 as well or hear the other person as well. And just remember, a lot of this, these go, these go away typically. A lot of times you're going to, hey, Hawk 7, Hawk 6, radio check over. All right, you get rid of this is. Typically those go away. Okay. Like I said, a lot of times you might hear loud and clear or they're coming in broken or um, Lima Charlie. All right. If they're coming in broken, sure, tell them, hey, I can hear you, but you're broken over or you're broken and unreadable over or something like that if you want to be more descriptive. But there's no reason to say loud and clear. Just say Roger. Roger is a positive affirmation of a, of a you know, of a word. So that is the best way to do a radio check, and that's a good example of a very basic radio transmission. All right. Okay, I hope today was helpful. My purpose of today was to give you some basic understanding of FM communications and how we use it in the Army, and then give you a good understanding of the correct words to use and how to use them. All right. Try to stick to these words. If you wanted additional words, there's probably about 20 more that I didn't go over that aren't as, usual, aren't as widely recognized as used, but in, in Appendix I of 6-2.53, there is a ton of words in there that you can use. 
All right, but these ones are the ones that you're going to typically see the most, and they're the ones that are most effective. Learn to use these words. Learn to talk um, succinctly. Learn to talk with clarity and not run on sentences. And you're going to be efficient, and your missions are going to be more successful because you're going to have great communication. You're going to be able to e more easily uh, communicate your intent to subordinates and to your higher headquarters. All right, thanks again. I'm Captain Justin DeLeon from the University of Iowa. Rangers lead the way.